Okay, hi there, welcome to a macro video. And in this revision session, we're gonna focus for a few minutes on the important concept of managed floating exchange rates. So what do we mean by a floating currency which is managed? Well, a managed system is an exchange rate system that allows a nation's central bank, often operating on behalf of the government, to intervene uh, regularly in foreign exchange markets to change the direction of the the market value of a currency's floating exchange rate and also perhaps to reduce the amount of currency volatility that there is in the market. This system, a managed floating currency, is also known as a dirty float. And uh, the choice of exchange rate regime is one of the most important a country can make uh, when shaping their, their macroeconomic policies. A managed floating system is the most popular exchange rate system in the world economy at the moment. And here are some examples of countries that use a managed system, including Nigeria, Brazil, India, South Africa, Mexico and Japan. Uh, this, uh, this idea that the managed floating is the most popular is significant as it means that intervention to change a currency's market value has become an increasingly important part of monetary policy, particularly part of macroeconomic policy in terms of trying to shape the movement of a currency. So here's a good example from China, uh, an article from the autumn of 2019. At the start of each trading day, China's central bank sets what they call a reference rate against which the Chinese currency, the renminbi, or the yuan, is allowed to move. It's allowed to rise or fall, no, I think, more than, no more than 2% in, in trading on a daily basis. They, they manage that. And here's another example from Argentina, a country beset by lots of economic volatility in recent times, including a very volatile exchange rate and a high inflation. Uh, they're moving, according to the central bank, moving towards a managed float of the currency of the peso. What might be some of the key motivations from an economic perspective for uh, moving towards a floating currency system, a managed floating system? Well, if we think about trying to depreciate a currency, here are three suggestions. First of all, the central bank might want to uh, intervene to depreciate a currency because they want the, the government wants the, the balance of trade of a country to improve. So a managed depreciation, if you like, improves their price and cost competitiveness and uh, might help to boost the export sectors of the economy. Of course, a managed depreciation also makes imports relatively more expensive. Managed depreciation could be a tool to try to prevent a deflationary recession. Uh, lower currency increases demand for and sales of exports in theory and increases domestic prices by making imports more expensive. So perhaps managing a fall in the currency can be a way of warding off the threat or the risk of deflation in a country. And in the medium term, they might want to bring the exchange rate down against other currencies to rebalance their economy away from purely just domestic consumption of goods and services, perhaps towards more resources allocated to exports and capital investment. When, when might you try to manage the currency in an, in an upwards direction, try and achieve a managed appreciation? Well, that might be the case, for example, when your economy is experiencing inflation, when there's been a boom and you want to curb demand pull inflationary pressures, or that you want to bring down the cost of key imports. For example, I don't know, you might want to bring down the cost of fertilizer from, for farmers or capital goods for manufacturers, other essential inputs and things, perhaps to bring down inflation or to enhance your long-run growth potential. Other reasons include trying to reduce the amount of volatility of market exchange rates. Uh, you see, when there are big movements up and down in currencies, that increases investor risk. People who might be putting money, for example, into your government's bonds, or stock markets, or, share, or um, property prices. So currency volatility can stifle inflows of financial capital and perhaps damage business confidence. An overseas investor considering whether to buy government bonds, for example, might have to price in the currency risk when they're deciding whether or not to buy those bonds. So in theory, again, in theory, a more stable exchange rate might bring down the risk premium or the interest rate on long-term government bonds. So how can 
Central bank intervene in currency markets to manage the currency's value. What options are available for a central bank that wants to operate a managed floating currency system? Essentially, three main ways to intervene. And this is good in terms of using your economic analysis. The first is a central bank could intervene directly in the currency market. If they want the currency to depreciate, they would sell their own currency and buy foreign currencies. The result being that their reserves of, of gold and foreign currencies go up. If they want the currency to appreciate, they'll be buying up their home currency and selling foreign currencies as a result. So intervention here to cause a currency depreciation might involve the central bank selling their currency, buying foreign currencies that brings the supply curve outwards and brings the exchange rate down. Intervention to cause a currency appreciation might involve the central bank buying up their own currency in the currency markets, causing an outward shift in the demand curve and then appreciation, other things being the same in the exchange rate. Here's a good example of Denmark, which has a fixed exchange rate against the euro, intervening in the currency markets, buying up the krona to prevent the krona weakening against the euro against which it is fixed. The second main option in terms of intervention is to use interest rates. The central bank might uh, tweak or change interest rates. So, for example, if they want a depreciation, they might cut interest rates to cause an outflow of hot money from the financial system. Uh, if they want the currency to appreciate, they may want they may increase interest rates to bring in some short term hot money. And crucially, this is quite an important idea. Quantitative easing is also an alternative intervention option. So if you want to cause a currency to depreciate, you might expand the scale of quantitative easing to stimulate the domestic money supply to bring down the bond uh, yields on bonds, central bank Expanding QE would involve buying more bonds. That increases the price of bonds and brings down the yield. And if bond yields are less attractive, that might cause an outflow of hot money. The government could also buy assets from overseas using QE. So the other, another alternative option if you want the currency to appreciate is to reduce the taxes on income from assets. So, for example, you might uh, reduce the tax on the interest paid to savers from overseas. And that should attract overseas investors to buy your currency. The UK economy, in theory, operates a free floating exchange rate. Uh, and here's an important statement from the Bank of England. We do not set the exchange rate. It's a free floating currency. But our actions, such as interest rates and quantitative easing, can indirectly affect the value of the pound. In that sense, there is no such thing as a pure free floating exchange rate. Something to bear, bear in mind. Final bit, uh, what are the limits to central bank intervention to manage a currency's value? What are the, some of the trade-offs, some, some of the potential constraints if you want to move to a managed floating system? Let me pick out uh, three for you. One is that you, you know, if you're going to manage the exchange rate, the central bank needs large-scale foreign exchange reserves. Dollars, euros, pounds, yuan and yen. And many smaller and relatively poorer countries simply don't have the foreign exchange reserves necessary uh, to, uh, to intervene in the markets. Second point is about market power. The scale of global currency trading is, is absolutely vast. I think the turnover is well over six and a half trillion dollars of currencies bought and sold every day. And again, central banks of relatively smaller countries intervening on their own to move their currency they may have little or no market power at all. Just sheer, the sheer weight of the speculative buying and selling of currencies would mitigate against the, the idea that you can actively manage the currency on a day-to-day -day basis. It might take, for example, big rises in interest rates to have a significant effect on, on, on the exchange rate. And indeed, you know, and, and that's a really a, a, just a limitation of the policy. And I think the third point, the final point in this presentation is definitely worth emphasising as part of your evaluation. Higher interest rates, for example, designed to attract hot money inflows and cause a currency, a managed currency depreciation, might also have the effect of reducing consumer demand, making mortgages more expensive and cutting planned business investment. So changing interest rates to influence a currency could trade off or conflict 
against other macroeconomic objectives. The example there will be raising interest rates to support a currency could lead to a slowdown in economic growth, potentially lead to a rise in, in unemployment. Well, we've looked in this video at managed floating exchange rates, what they are, uh, why countries might use them, what are the techniques for intervention, and some of the limitations. This is an important area of exchange rate economics and definitely worth knowing about ahead of your exams and assessments. So thank you for joining me on this one. Take care and see you again soon.